Thanks for tuning in. In this video, I would like to give a demonstration of using PixHawk with a companion computer. In this case, it's the Raspberry Pi. And what I'm going to do is actually show you guys how to get Pi up and running. We're going to install Mavlink and MavProxy, connect it to PixHawk, and then have the ability to send commands to PixHawk. Now, this is really powerful because in the world of UAVs, we all know you need a flight controller, but an onboard computer such as Pi can do things like image recognition. Pi will run OpenCV, which is a computer vision library. So you could imagine using this camera to detect an object, track it, and follow it. And this video is not going to get into that level of detail. In upcoming videos, I'll cover some of the things that we can do with drone kit running on Pi that makes UAV applications really interesting. I have this brand new Raspberry Pi 2. I believe it's the Model B. It has a gig of RAM, 900 megahertz processor. And what I'll do is walk you guys through setting this up. We'll install the Raspbian Linux distribution and then the necessary libraries to get this working and communicating with our PixHawk. What I'll do first is take our micro SD card, put it in this adapter. I will plug it into the Mac. We'll format it and load the Linux image on here and then put it into our Raspberry Pi. Let me first mention that all of this information exists in the ArduPilot documentation and so I'm just trying to put together a video that shows my experience for setting Raspberry Pi up with PixHawk. I'll be sure to put a link to this document in the description below. The first thing you'll want to do is download an operating system. I just recommend starting out with Raspbian and I've already downloaded Raspbian Jesse, the full version. If you wanted a light version that doesn't have any sort of UI or desktop, you could do light if you're very familiar with the command line. But in this case, we're going to do the desktop version. And we'll go to this page that talks about installing Jesse onto the SD card. I'm going to use the command line format because I'm on a Mac and that's what I normally default to. Here is the empty SD card that I've plugged into my Mac. Now this is a 32 gigabyte card. I generally recommend nothing less than eight gigabytes. If you look at the Raspbian download, this is a four gigabyte file. It will get extracted onto the card and possibly end up being larger than that. So eight gigabytes minimum. I've opened up terminal on my Mac and I'm actually in the directory that has our image file that we're going to copy over. The first thing we need to do is figure out the disk number that we're going to reference. So I'll do a disk util list and you can see generally your disk zero will be your main drive and in this case disk two is our 32 gigabyte SD card. So we'll keep in mind this dev disk two. The first thing we'll want to do is we're going to want to unmount that disk. So I'll do a disk util unmount, hit enter. It tells us that our disk was successfully unmounted. Now the last thing we'll need to do to make this copy happen is we're going to run this dd command and give it a block size of one megabyte. This is our input file which is the Raspbian Jesse image. And here you can see we're going to use our disk 2. Sudo is required to do this as an administrator and time will just tell us how long this command takes. Now all of this is basically from the Raspbian installation document. So I'll go ahead and run this. It'll prompt me for my password. And generally this will take about two minutes. Our copy is complete. You can see that took about 94 seconds. And let's just take a quick look at our SD card. You can see that the image files have been extracted here and now the SD card is bootable. So I'll go ahead and eject it. We'll put it in Pi and then continue on to the next step. Raspbian is installed. We're going to boot this up. I realize I have a bit of a mess here. Keyboard and mouse connected via USB and then a monitor via HDMI. And this is mainly just to get everything configured, get this on my network so that then I can access it remotely, load scripts on it, send commands to PixSock. So let's go ahead and power this up and see if we can get the OS to boot. I've given it five volts from the USB connector. 
you should be able to see that uh, we have input on the screen and now we can see the boot sequence. The main thing I want to do here is get the network configured. This could have been done completely with, without any sort of UI, but just for demonstration purposes, I wanted to keep it simple. And also, this is a seven inch monitor that I had laying around. You could hook this up to a full size TV or monitor that would give you better resolution. So I'm going to connect to my garage pilots network. I'll go ahead and enter the password. Now we can see we have a good connection. The last thing I'll do is just make sure that I know what the IP address is. Now you can make it static, but just for this demonstration, I'm going to grab the dynamic IP and it says it's 10.0.1.15. What I can do now is just shut down and then connect it to the network and we should be able to access it from my Mac. I removed the keyboard, mouse and monitor. I'm going to go ahead and just plug it in to USB to power it up. It should maintain our network settings. In just a few minutes, we'll actually be connecting this to Pixhawk and getting power from there. This should boot now. We'll go over to my Mac. I'll access it over that IP address. We'll install the software, then connect to Pixhawk and see how everything works. I'm back at the terminal on my MacBook. I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick test to ping the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, just to see that it's on the same wireless network as my computer and we're getting a response. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to log in to the Raspberry Pi. Now, there's always a default user of Pi and the password is Raspberry. So we'll do that. And you can see that I'm logged in to Raspberry Pi. Now we're gonna look at the wiki page and you can see here are the libraries that we want to install. So I'm going to go ahead and execute each one of these and that will allow us to get Mavlink and Mav Proxy running on Raspberry Pi. After we've updated our app sources, we are going to then run this next command, which are a bunch of dependencies for both Mavlink and Mav Proxies. Now we'll install PyMavlink using this command. And the last module that we'll need to install is Mav Proxy. So we'll go ahead and run that. Map proxy is installed and that is all the software that we're going to need to install onto the Raspberry Pi. Now the last thing we're going to do is disable access to the serial port from the operating system. We're gonna run raspi config. We have to run that as a root user. And the reason we wanna do this is because we're going to access that serial port from Pixhawk. So we'll go ahead and select no here. Okay, and then we'll escape. Now we'll connect Raspberry Pi to Pixhawk and try running some commands. The wiring for this is pretty straightforward. I have a six pin, I believe this is the FTDI connector, and then on the other end, the six pin telemetry connector that goes to Pixhawk. So we're only using four of these pins. We have power, ground, transmit, and receive, and those go to the appropriate pins over here. Obviously, transmit's going to go to receive here, and receive is going to go to transmit. So make sure that you get that set up correctly. So I'll go ahead and connect our cable. We're going to connect this to telemetry two, because telemetry one is currently be, being used by a 3DR radio. And then on the other end, we'll have our power pin go right here. Let me open this up so it's a little bit easier to see. And we'll have our power go to this first pin right here. So everything is now connected. The Pi will receive five volt input voltage from Pixhawk. Now ideally it's recommended to run five volts into the USB because that is power regulated. But for this demonstration, I'm going to power it through this connector. Our first step will just be to verify that we get power. I'm going to go ahead and connect this 3S LiPo through our Pixhawk power module. You can see Pixhawk is powered. You can see Raspberry Pi is getting power as well. One thing I failed to mention that I just learned is that if you're installing Raspbian Jesse version, 
you're going to need to enable the serial port. Now we disabled it earlier using Raspi config, but what we need to do next is actually enable it for external communication when it boots up. And you can see that in the boot up config script at the very bottom, there's enable UART parameter. By default, that was zero. I set it to one and then rebooted. So now we can communicate. Now what I'll do next is I will grab this command here and we'll run it and that will allow us to connect to the PixHawk. Now in the ArduPilot documentation, it states that we want to connect to this port. Now we're going to actually change this to serial zero, which is a new requirement if you're running Raspbian and Jesse, so just keep that in mind. I actually have APM plane running on PixHawk right now, so I'll just change that to plane. That can be whatever you want it to be, so I'll just make sure that it's relevant for us. I will change to sudo so that we can access the serial port, and as I mentioned before, we're using serial zero in this case. Plane will be the directory that our telemetry logs are saved to. I'll hit enter, and then what we'll see is a PixHawk responding to Raspberry Pi and then communicating back to my MacBook over Wi-Fi. A lot going on here, but what is happening is now the parameters are being downloaded and saved to my local directory on the Raspberry Pi. And I can just type mode. It'll tell us that we're in RTL mode and then show us the other modes that we can change into. So I'll go mode stabilize. And you can see that the Mavlink message is sent. And if I echo mode, it'll display that we are in stabilized mode. Now, just as a final test to show you this connection, I'm connected to Pi over the network. Pi is connected to PixHawk. And so we have our safety switch currently enabled. So I'm going to run the command arm safety off. And if you watch our safety switch when I hit enter, you can see now that it's armed, meaning the safety's off. I can always turn it back on by arm safety on. You can see it's blinking again, and then we can run arm throttle. Now this probably won't even work. You can see that it's running some pre-arm checks telling us the compasses are inconsistent, bad GPS position, and so on. I wanted to demonstrate that high-level overview of connecting Pi to PixHawk. In an upcoming video, I'm going to talk about using DroneKit and Python to do some interesting things with code, image recognition, setting waypoints, and all sorts of intelligence that you can add to Pi and communicate to PixHawk using the Mavlink protocol. I've been really impressed with what we have available to us with Pi, PixHawk, and DroneKit. Just the open source initiative is amazing and it's really a great time to be a UAV operator. I know this video was rather involved, but I really wanted to share this process as it's something that I've been experimenting with over the past year. If you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below. I'll be sharing more PixHawk and Raspberry Pi integration in the near future. And until next time, thanks for watching.